Canada, a shining example of maximum wokeness, a place where there's no mankind, there are just people. Is the love that's going to change the future of mankind. So we'd like you to look uh, we, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind, because uh, yeah. it's more inclusive. There we go. <laughs> Turns out, though, that beneath the glitzy slogan of inclusivity lies a tragic past. Harrowing news has emerged in British Columbia of a mass grave of 215 children, indigenous children, who were ripped from their homes and forcibly enrolled in one of the largest Indian residential schools. The news that remains were found at the former Kamloops Residential School breaks my heart. It is a painful reminder of that dark and shameful chapter of our country's history. I am thinking about everyone affected by this distressing news. We are here for you. The residential school system was indeed dark and shameful. Set up by the government and run by churches, these were educational facilities for first people. Only they weren't, really. They were indoctrination camps into European and Christian ways of living. Native languages were banned and traditions frozen out. Reports revealed that children were underfed, underclothed, and often housed in unsanitary conditions, to the extent that, as one medical inspector wrote, 24% of previously healthy children began dying in these facilities. Stories of abuse, physical, emotional, and sexual, were rife. Every day was, you were in constant fear that your hope was that it wasn't you today that was going to be the target, the victim. You know, you weren't going to have to suffer any form of humiliation. You learn not to cry anymore. You just get harder. And yeah, you learn to shut down. I couldn't talk a word of English. I talked Cree and I was abused for that hit and made to try to talk English. I lost my language. They threatened us with a strapping if we spoke it. And within a year, I lost all of it. I used to hear my ill brother crying at night. I asked the principal to take him to the hospital. He didn't. After about two weeks, my brother was in so much pain he was going out of his mind. I pleaded with the principal for days to take him to a doctor. They started to sexually take advantage of me and abuse me. Not one, not two, but many, many people for a very long time, until I was 16. I held everything in and didn't tell anybody for 20 years. And they had no one to tell, because they were isolated from their families and their communities, all to make them true Canadians. For over a century, the central goals of Canada's Aboriginal policy were to cause Aboriginal peoples to cease to exist. The establishment and operation of residential schools were a central element of this policy, which can best be described as cultural genocide. The scale of this cultural genocide is startling. 150,000 children over 130 years. And if you think it's ancient history, it's not. The last residential school was shut in 1996. Over 4,000 deaths by mistreatment, neglect and disease, with families often never learning of their children's fate. There's many atrocities and um, circumstances in which, um, you know, are unbearable to hear. Um, and, you know, for us, you know, we, you know, to learn of this year potential find, you know, from the professionals that were brought in, you know, we are very much broken up. The past is a dark place filled with unforgivable moments. It's an inescapable part of life. But to rebrand yourself as a bastion of humanity, as a model of inclusivity that preaches to others how they should live, whilst the bones of oppressed children lie beneath your feet, it's nothing but an example of the hypocrisy and insincerity so often embedded in the wokeness of the Western world. So using the word people kind might soothe a guilty conscience, but it won't make those skeletons in your closet go away. You know, it's all well and good for the federal government to make gestures 
of goodwill and support regarding this tragedy. But as a community who's burdened with this legacy of this dark, dark chapter of Canadian history and the federally mandated Indian residential school system, there is an important ownership and accountability to both the Kamloops and all the communities and families that it has affected. And, you know, there's still a lot of, um, you know, work that needs to get done and, you know, and a lot of things that are still happening. And um, what looks like, you know, some is already well accounted for in the, the Tooth and Reconciliation final report, but there are other aspects that are unique which are the unique needs of communities as well.